both so much for coming to our first ever competition slash festival weekend. It was a really great experience, I think, for everybody. Um, at your master class, I noticed that you made a point to ask each student what they thought about their own technique or what they were missing. And I wonder if you'd like to talk about wh yes. why you do that. Actually, I don't do exactly that. I ask uh, what, they would, what they would like to improve, which is exactly what I ask. Uh, because it's not so much uh, if what they say is what I think, but it's more about what they say. So it means that, you know, sometimes they will be very specific. So it means that sometimes they think, I mean, it's a way to know them, in fact. To be honest, it's not so important what they say precisely, but it's more about how they say it, which is important. So because I just have 40 minutes to connect with the, the person and the process can be very different if the guy knows the same piece for like six years and, and it's not fresh anymore, but it's still secure. It's very different that it's a work in process. If the guy has, uh, can really think about what he's doing or just work, I mean, it's just to uh, make connection basically. So is it mostly for your benefit or for their their benefit? It's too for the I hope for the class benefit. Mm, okay. Yeah. Because it made me think that that was also maybe a good strategy in general, because I think a lot of students, maybe even myself included, don't always think yes. for ourselves very well. But, you know, self analysis is so important. <clears throat> yeah, I do that mainly in master class. For the student I see each week, it's a little bit different. Maybe I did it, but after that, probably I don't so much need to do it. But for master class, it's really the, the, the way to, uh, to understand how they feel themselves about what they do. It's, it's a very important thing to be connected fast. If I have many classes, maybe I won't do it because maybe I will try to figure myself. Mm. And I know that sometimes put kind of a lot of pressure to ask, to ask these kind of things. But I always say, okay, but I don't ask you a smart answer, just how it comes. Because I will not judge the guy for what he say. I just try to get some stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's a, it's a great question to ask because it, it made me think that the that people need to be asked that question more often to force Maybe. them to think for themselves. Um, and I, I also wanted to ask you about your feelings as far as how guitarists think, because I noticed that you also, in your masterclass, uh, were talking about the importance of the line mm -hmm. and how guitarists tend to think more vertically and just mm -hmm. think chord. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think the, the most important thing is that we all should uh, listen to music a lot. We should spend uh, many hours every day listening to different performances and different performers. Or, and, and I'm not talking about guitar and guitarists and guitar music. I think, uh, I strongly believe that uh, there's no teacher in the world that can teach you more than the recordings of the most amazing masters. And, and uh, every single guitar student should have five favorite artists. And uh, I mean, n again, non-guitarists, right? We all have our guitar heroes, of course. That's normal. But besides that, we should have some people that we follow, that we love, that we admire, that we get CD, uh, uh, recordings of, that we listen to these recordings. And I think in my life, that was the, 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 the moment when I felt in love with, with, uh, with music more than with the guitar, was the breakthrough, was the, the most important moment of my life. I, when I was 18 or 19, I started hating the guitar and, and I, I, because, because I fell in love with piano so much. I, I heard <laughs> the like first... Me. The the first thing I heard, my teacher gave me when I was 17, he gave me a recording of Claudio Arrau playing a F minor concerto by, uh, uh, by Chopin. And, and, and that, that was something so unbelievable for me. I have never heard anything that amazing in my life. Till, till, till when I was 17 and, and, and since then I started getting more piano CDs and all artists and I started discovering other things and, and because of that I started hurt, hating the guitar because I thought I cannot be expressive with the guitar the guitar has no volume there has no repertoire that, why can't we play Chopin why can't we play Mozart Beethoven and Debussy etc so 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 um, um, I, I started to listen to a lot of music and, and then of course the, the, the older I got the, the, the more mature I got I started understanding that every instrument is different and guitar is a, an amazingly beautiful instrument and I fell in love with it again but that moment when I, when I discovered music 
in general, not the guitar. That moment was a breakthrough for me. Since then, I started loving music much more than loving the guitar, even though I love guitar. Uh, uh, and and I now I think that there's more and more good repertoire for guitar also, and I try to 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 discover that and work on that. But but. Um, Music is my first thing, for sure. Mm -hmm. And I believe that every student should go through that process, should listen to music. And that's why I was I was telling this to, to the students, that they should listen and they should think uh, outside of the guitar uh, possibilities. We should break the, the walls around mm -hmm. the guitar because we shouldn't let guitar control how we play. Right. We should control it. And that's, that's what, that was my point, basically. Do you, is that part of the reason why you, you spend a lot of time, I think, more than some other artists at, in, in your level with other musicians, with playing with groups, with different, yes. different instruments? Yeah, I believe, again, uh, oh, great, thanks for, 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 for saying that, because that's another thing I really wanted to say. I believe you cannot be a great musician if you don't play chamber music. You cannot. If you only play alone, you will always be not as good as people that play with other people. I strongly believe that. Because if you play with others, you, you learn to listen. You learn the time. You learn the style. You, you learn from other instruments. For I tell you a story. We, I played with, with, the, uh, with the violinist and cellist in a trio. And, and they were top, top musicians, really. And we played a piece, and, and, and I had a line, cantabile line. And I played it, and I thought it was so. <laughs> I was so proud of myself. I said, man, I nailed it. But I look at them and they were not impressed, <laughs> you know? And I was expecting them to be like, wow, man, you're good. They didn't say anything. Yeah, and, but then I thought about it and I said, well, it's normal for them that you play a beautiful line. I mean, if there's a line, you play it beautifully, you vibrate every note, you sing it, you make a long... For them, it's a natural thing. <laughs> for me, it was a big thing, you know? I made it. So... So I learned that all the time. For example, I, I uh, right now I worked on uh, Yobe and uh, Catalan songs, and 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 I wanted some inspiration. So I started searching online for CDs of Catalan songs, but sang by, by singers. I found Jose Carrera, Carreras. I found Victoria de los Angeles. I found the the whole group of uh, Jordi Saval, his wife singing, his daughter singing, his son singing. And I noticed that the way they phrase the music is completely different than we do on guitar. Mm -hmm. So I went on YouTube and I checked some guitar performances just to see, just to compare. I said, man, this is a completely different thing. They, they take breath in a completely different place. They phrase differently. The, 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 the articulation is different. The tempos are completely different. So I discovered a new world for me. It was, uh, again, it was something amazing to see how these guys do it. So, so I believe playing with others you, you, you see how beautifully they shape a phrase, like a violinist or a singer, or, 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 or the vibrato, how they produce the vibrato. If, uh, if you play with, with string quartet, you see the power, the, the, the control of the dynamics, and you try to put it on guitar and imitate that on guitar. Mm -hmm. So I would spend hours to try to do the phrase that Carreras did in Testament de Amelia, for example, you know, to, and I couldn't get it. And I tried, I tried, I tried. And of course, I will never be able to do it like him, because voice is voice. But the inspiration is something that is just incredible. So, so playing with other people make you a better musician. You want to try to be as good as them. And, and, and also my, uh, Barueco, Manuel Barueco, my, uh, the, the, uh, I, I studied with him for five years. And the, one of the most important things he told me, he said, when you play chamber music, you should play a lot of chamber music. But make sure you play with people that are better than you. Mm. Never play with people that are you, uh, as you or worse than you. Always with better. So that's, that's my, my thing. I try to play with, with people that I can learn from, that are better, that, that have done things that I'm doing right now many years ago. And they're already somewhere else. How do, and this is for maybe both of you, uh, how do you guys feel about the, the change in the level of sophistication of the, the guitar players now versus 20 or 30 years ago? Uh, well, I was born 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Well, he can tell you. 25. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you about what he said. It's, uh, I, I wouldn't change one word, uh, in particular the way he discovered other kind of music. I did exactly the same thing than him. I discovered piano music, actually. And Claudio Raoult was one of the first, actually. That's funny. Wow. But uh, yes, man. was the the, 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 <laughs> the, uh, the studies by Liszt. The we have good taste, man. Yeah, I know. 
<laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but the, 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 the goal, the problem as a teacher is, uh, okay, you say that to the students, but the problem is to don't be considered like when your parents say you should read, you know, because when I say, okay, you have to listen to other musicians, blah, 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 this kind of things, which is totally true, which is what I think the problem is to really communicate that deeply and not the fact it would be good that you do that, like the parents, they say you should read or you should, uh, you know, you should do intellectual stuff. Everybody say that and very few people are doing it because they have the feeling that it's going to be hard, tough, and this is basically boring. just for boring and mm -hmm. for intellectual. Yeah. And th that's all the time one of the things I try to do with the teaching, and sometimes it works, sometimes it works less, is to, I mean, it's like at school, you know, there's a lot of stuff which are boring and if the teacher is particularly good, you start to get interest. Even if, it, if it's not a topic that you would really take care. And that that's the thing. And I remember I had some big fail sometimes, even bringing the students to concerts. And for some reason it wasn't prepared. I remember one time I brought one student in a concert, good player. And it was a Chopin concert by Mauricio Polini 20 years ago, something like this. So really a top concert. And he did it because I told him to do it because I go, I went with him, but he didn't get it. It was just so mm. boring for him. Mm. He was looking the roof at the roof actually, uh, precisely like me when I was in museum when I was seven and my parents yeah. were bringing me to museum. I hate that, and that that that's the thing very difficult to communicate. And of course, I don't know exactly how to do it. Sincerity is very important because time to time you have some people who will talk about that, but it's not sincere. It's like the parents who never read a book and they say to do, to you, to their kids, please read. Mm -hmm. They will never do it because mm -hmm. it's right. visible that it's not sincere. And sometimes you can have some teacher who will say, oh, Albanese, you have to listen to Alicia de la Rocha, or Chopin, you have to listen to Rubinstein, you know, or, or Bach, Menuhin. I mean, without really thinking, it's just, uh, we call the culture press button, you know, you have this and like this but if it's something that you really have inside your body you will talk with more passion and you will be more credible and one of the things that really kill sometimes the student doing this is because the people who say that they are not very credible because it's not connected with what they feel deeply inside right. that's something I really notice mm. so it wasn't the answer to your question <laughs> Go listen to this because I said so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, how about the level of the of the student who has really increased? Uh, I, I can explain it very quickly, but during many years until the 50s, 60s, there were just one guy who was doing all, all the recording. There were other good players, actually. I've discovered some yeah. really good players, but the recording were very difficult to, to find. The, the guy was Segovia, who is the best and the worst. I mean, like everybody. And uh, so during one generation, uh, it was the only figure. I mean, on, on the violin in the 50s, they had at least 20 people who were record or more, you know, and each country has different one. So more, more than 20, piano, cello, yeah. I mean, those, those instruments. And after that, they were like, Bream that arrived and Williams, and during many years, they were just two more, Ali Diaz, Gidia, I mean, few of them, Oscar also. Right. I mean, but it was not so much. So. Uh, the, all those guys were very good, but they were not enough, and it's not their fault. And 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 now there are much more people, so it gives much more opportunity for younger to improve. But I must say that we still having a huge difference because a lot of score that we have are not necessarily exactly the good score. They are, they, they, they are you know, you play Ponce to the score, whatever, you have like two different scores. Nobody knows exactly what to play. People play different things without so much thinking. So it's still a mess, but it's still much better. I can see the difference. Even with my student, I teach at a high level for like 15 years, and I can say that a lot of things that I had to say uh, 15 years ago, I don't have to say it anymore mm. uh, because it's done. So, of course, the level has increased because that, but it doesn't mean that it's exactly the same than for the older instrument because there's still less country who are part of it, less people who are doing it, and we're still having this very uh, heavy and tradition which 
I like actually there's a lot of things I like on the guitar one of the things I like is if I think how I decide to become a professional very late when I discover actually when I stopped playing the guitar it was the time I discovered the piano I totally stopped during two three years probably in violin and piano if I had the same talent than on the guitar it would have been totally has been because I would have been too old basically mm, right. to decide this I mean all the so I love this instrument because this instrument gave me the opportunity to be a musician and with how I work with my brain probably I wouldn't have fit and probably I wouldn't have the same talent but even for my brain even if I like the music the way I work it would have fit with other instruments and maybe the money things also it's much more expensive but anyway I like a lot this instrument I like a lot the problem of this instrument but also I, I, I want like everybody who is part of how, how a guitar work to improve this I mean like many people how do you think um I, I think that a lot of organizations in particular that are putting on concerts have a lot of difficulty getting larger audiences to come to guitar concerts, even though the level has been improving so significantly. It's, it's rare, I think, anymore that you see a, a genuinely bad guitar concert, classical guitar at least. And But it's, it's kind of hard to market it because a lot of people still don't even though there's more people at the level is increasing a lot of people at least in this country are not really very aware of it as as an instrument and i wonder if you have any thoughts on how that can be improved like as far as well, strategies i think i think it's 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 a big problem now um because the world is changing the world is improving the the things that are happening right now computers internet and all this stuff i mean it's it's killing a lot of the industry music classical music industry people more and more people don't need it to uh, they don't think it's necessary it, they don't they don't think artist is a real job they don't treat artists seriously and very often i get a question about what do you do i uh, i say i'm a guitarist uh, and they ask me if I if I play in a bar, and then I say, <laughs> no, no, I'm a classical guitarist. And then they go, ah, oh, fine dining then. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, right. Uh, people have no idea very often, and and I think um, because of everything that we have around the wealth that we see around, everything is is possible to get. There's nothing that we have to fight for. I mean, everything is there ready for us. There's less and less people that want to become classical musicians. Also, I mean. I noticed that in Poland that oh, yes, in France, 10 years ago there were hundreds of young people wanting to study classical guitar but but then uh, every year it's less and less and I kind of understand because it's very difficult you have these students I uh, five or six students that are graduating and they're all very good and they all want to play they all really want to play concerts and go around but you know inside that if one will su succeed, it's going to be amazing. But probably none of them will really be on uh, traveling and playing. Right. Because, n not because they're not good enough. It's because it's so difficult. You need so much luck to, to do it. And, and people start to see it. And for example, I, did, I felt this really, really heavily. Two years ago, I had auditions for my school, for my Academy of Music. And there was this girl. I didn't know her. I was shocked. She played an amazing audition. I mean, maximum points, 25 for 25. Mm. I was I was so happy. And I and the judge asked her, who you want to study with? And she said she wanted to study with me. I was like, yeah, man, she's <laughs> great. I'm an amazing student. And then one month later, I get an email from her that she also auditioned for veterinary school. And her, her parents you know, made her made, made, made her do it. And she she decided to resign from, from guitar and because her parents thought that this job is more stable, she'll have a job, she'll make good money, she'll be able to survive with guitar, which is true. I mean, they're, it they're, is not, true. they're not wrong, yeah. They're not wrong, they're not wrong. I, one of my best friends is a veterinary doctor and I told him the story, he's like, man, look at me. I mean, I have a stable job. I, you know, I, I have a good life. With with musicians, it's so difficult. It's such such a risky job. So I understand the parents don't want kids to to take guitar seriously. I understand that, and because people don't take it seriously, also there's less and less people that want to go to concerts because they don't treat it seriously. The world is changing, and but also not to being that pessimistic. <laughs> I think that this We're is also doing. our power. Because I think if something is for a lot of people, then it loses its thing. 
if it's just mm. for a little for a small amount of people it's more special so 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 i'm proud uh, that classical music is a niche actually niche mm. thing you know um because i think that makes it more special more beautiful more uh, elite really yeah, i think the challenge going forward will be finding the the sort of uh, balance. ecosystem balance yeah. of enough support that it maintains yeah. the artists who are there but not so much that but it's... I believe that there will always be people that will want to support them mm-hmm. I really believe because people that that, that that want to be cultural they, they will want to be part of this world and they will want to support it they will want to go to concerts because they will feel better if they're part of this small niche thing I, I, I believe so Actually, I exact, exactly believe that I have all the time when I you talk agree about with me that. Again. I, totally. Yeah. Uh, uh, when, when I talk about that, at the same time, I'm very pessimistic because actually the world changed. I mean, for Europe, I mean, in China, it's something different happened. But, but in Europe, I mean, for example, in France, there are much less and less people who are doing violin professionally because the orchestra they don't hire mm-hmm. people. And now people start to know. So there are much less people. So on mm-hmm. violin, all the instruments, there are less people. And it makes sense. All the time I do this test with my students, it's quite interesting. I bought a very nice book about the posters for Théâtre des Champs-Élysées, who was the main thea- theater for classical music in France mm-hmm. uh, during for like more than 100 years. So I showed the, the, the picture and I said, do you notice something special? So Rubinstein, all those guys, they played there. And they say, I don't know, the, the posters are nice. But actually, it's not that. All those guys, even the most mainstream guy, they play contemporary music. Mm. Right. They all play contemporary music. They play Scriabin, Prokofiev. This is contemporary music at, at right. that time. Yeah. And so somehow it was much more part of the thing. It was it was it was much more lively. Of course there are a lot of contemporary music now, but they are not played by the same guys. They are guys who play contemporary music. The guitar is a little bit specific, but the other instrument, there is people who just play contemporary and the other who would never play that. Right. Let's say. And on the past Everybody was playing Ravel, Scriabin, Rachmaninoff. I mean, it was com- music composed recently. I mean, the last one very big like this was Shostakovich, you know? Mm-hmm. The last one, I mean, you, we had some big guys who died after, but they were less known than Shostakovich, you know? So it's the last guy. But since this, it's a niche. It's a niche inside the niche. So somehow it, it's logical that after that, it, it, it's like classical music come, uh, becomes part of the history mainly it used to be alive and now a big part of what we do is part of the history and there will be all the time some people who are interested by that i always make this joke which is uh, i say but you know we are we still having people who, who learn arameans i don't know uh, you know the, the 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 language that was talking the, the oh aramaic yeah yeah uh, Ar- aramaic you know, yeah. yeah aramaic there's still a lot of people who not a lot of people but some people who are very interested by that so I say that as a provocative thing because I really hope we are not going to be so small <laughs> but still it will be different it will be a niche and that's fine I mean if you don't want to be part of a niche just do Justin Bieber things and you won't be part of a niche so you need to uh, mm-hmm. you need to accept that mm-hmm. same thing with the movie I like a lot movie I mean there is this wonderful Polish uh, director Chris Lowski, sorry, Chris Lowski, yeah. Chris Lowski. Mm-hmm. I mean his movie are very popular for inside the people who like a movie but if you ask people on the street they won't know it mm-hmm. so does it mean that we shouldn't take care about this director of course not I mean, I like him even more because I know yeah. that, uh, you know, that, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, of course, there is a critical size. If we are just three people who, who, who is able to do that, it's kind of dying, you know. But also, if everybody likes something, there must be something wrong with this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's impossible yeah. I, that every, I really believe in if, that. It, if everybody loves it, it means it's not art. Yeah. Mm. The art is something that some people love, some people hate. That's it. It's black or white, you know? And, and it, it leaves you thinking. Mm. I didn't like it really. It was uh, da, da, da. or I loved it. It moved me. So so it's that that's art. But if if you know millions of people love something then it means it's it's just, you know, nothing special. Yeah. We we create in France uh, barbar- barbarism when we create a word that doesn't exist is egalitaire, equal and elite, elite. So we say elitaire. So it's the two two words mm-hmm. put together. So it's like elite, but for everybody. So mm-hmm. so it's one of the goal actually. Of course, when I play, I prefer when I have one thousand people, five hundred people, than fifty. I prefer. I'm much more happy like this. 
but of course uh, I have my own limit about what I can do to have more people and my limit they are very personal and I think this is also the limit of classical music I mean the, the, the classical music won't be, and in fact it's difficult to compare because on the past before the recording who was listening to classical music I mean, nobody except the, the very high okay, top one right. uh, of the society. And even after that, when they were the recording possibility, not so much. A bit more, probably, there were a time when there were a bit more people, but in the 19th century, I mean, 95% of the, percent of the population even didn't read, not 95, but a big <laughs> part, you know, in the 18th. There were 10% of right. the people who were reading. So you can imagine that the 90 other people were not going to classical concerts that didn't really exist, you know, at right. this time. So it's, it's not so much the point, I, I think. If we start to think like this, we have to think that all the time the most famous are the best, the most famous singer, so maybe Justin Bieber is the best singer ever. I mean, we, we can't think like this. And if we don't think like this, there's no limitation about what how we should think. So it's a problem, but not so much a problem, I think. Um, <clears throat> to ask a selfish question, well, it's related, I think, a little bit, but it's it's also selfish. Uh, I teach a lot of younger students, beginners, and I'm wondering if you think there's something that can be done as far as how you should gain their interests, given the things that are going on in the world, the, the differences in the, the, the cultural uh, entities that they have access to. You know, kids come in and they, they want to they want to be a rock star, what can you do as a teacher to make it more accessible? Is there anything, I mean, I know you guys probably mostly teach very high level students, so I don't know if you I teach beginners during 10 years. Really? Yeah, so I what? really teach during many years, and I really like it actually. Yeah. And they were not professional, most of, I mean 95, 5% didn't become professional. Uh, let's say that if they play classical, it won't be in high school or anywhere else that they will have some real world. Like, uh, oh, you play classical guitar in high school, that's great. No, nobody, maybe some people will eventually make fun of them, even because they play classical music in some schools. So I would say that the best teacher I ever seen for young kids, and I don't include myself, uh, they had first, they were doing a lot of, uh, you know, stuff to reward, reward uh, what they were doing. I mean. It's not just encouraging. It's, for example, try to build some events where they are put in a nice way. They were doing guitar orchestras. They were, he was organizing concerts for them. They were organizing concerts. I mean, they were doing really stuff to make them feel important doing mm -hmm. music. So if you really want to do a real work, let's say that me, for example, I was really working hard during the class and I really like it, but I was never at the other step to really do a lot of things, organizing concerts, bring them in concert, calling the parents and do this kind of thing. I guess the, the, the only way to make this working with a larger amount of students is to, to be really involved, sincerely involved. You like that, you like pedagogy, you want to organize things, you want them to meet each other because usually if they, are, if they know each other, you create a small community. So orchestra, are very, to be honest, I don't like guitar orchestra listening, but in terms of pedagogy, mm -hmm. I think it's great because they mm -hmm. become friends mm -hmm. just for social reason, not just social reason, but one big part is that. And you need to create something that will be nice for them and not just oh this freak is doing this kind of guitar and he even can't play the I don't know the famous rock song and he need to have a score so you need to create that and I know some people who are really good and they have amazing result they have amazing result they have maybe you know uh, after after with 10 students that start with them maybe one will be with kind of professional and four or five will go to concert later when they are adult and this is great. I mean, if you if you succeed in this proportion, that's amazing. Mm. Because most of the teacher, they will have time to time when somebody is super talented, they will become professional, and the other will never go to concert later. And actually, a big part of the job we do is also to build an audience. Because anyway, you don't want to have like 20 next professional. I mean, they, would, they wouldn't find any work. But right. if you build <laughs> an audience, that's great. If they buy a ticket when they are 30 and you know that's something and i remember 
I was very lucky because I understood that. Even when I was 20, I understood that my goal wasn't to find people like me who wants to do it professionally or are gifted like me. I really understood that very, very fast. And I'm kind of proud of that because usually when you are young, basically you just want to have kids like, like you. Mm-hmm. But me, I, I knew that I had to, if somebody was really liking the music and I was hoping that later it will go, I was very proud. Time to time when I play in France, I have some students who had class with me when they were nine or 10 or 11, and they go to see me. So it's linked because it's me, but I'm much more touched somehow that when it's an actual student to see my concert. Do you, um, this is kind of going back to what you said before about the, the importance of the phrasing and the line and the way that guitar normally is played. How do you think that you can fix that early? Do you think students should play more melodic content, that just just single lines or single notes? Because guitar usually will jump in pretty quickly with chords. how to play arpeggios. Yeah. You have to work on the right hand, you know, yeah. which is of course important. But then, mm-hmm. I th- I think it will be very important to uh, um, when you give a new piece to your student it's very important that before he learns the whole piece he learns every line separately and so so first i will give a piece and ask to just for next time learn the first line the the melody or the top line and then for next lesson learn the bottom line so so he gets she or he gets used to the line and he he, she or he (laughs) hears the line and and then once you are aware of every single line then you ask okay now connect these things i think if that was the order of learning a piece uh i think it it would be a completely different thing Mm. Because it would be much easier than than the opposite. First, learn everything, and now, okay, now you play just the line. Uh, I I don't know if you noticed yesterday at the at, at, at the classes that whenever I ask someone to do the melody, they have a, they had a problem. Right. They couldn't do it by itself. Yes, no, they were so uh, you know connected with all the, all other lines. They they couldn't think just about one line and, and and I think that's a big problem I think we should start with 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 just with lines to understand exactly what's going on and what I do with my students also is is no matter how great they play when they come and study for the first year we do etudes by Leo Brower really one to ten and so the easiest ones yeah, yeah. really but what I want them to do is to first learn every single line of every single etude and, and, and to follow five elements that I learned from, from Maestro Barueco again. There's five things you can do with interpretation. One is the dynamic, second is the, the time, third is the articulation, uh, fourth is the color, and fifth is the vibrato. And these five things, I want them to work on each one separately but just on lines so you have one line and first you work on about you work with with dynamics and and dynamic to me piano mezzo forte fortissimo is is a very um, a general thing i think dynamics is a bit more than that dynamic is a direction that one note takes to another note and then from there you go to another note that's direct that's dynamic because f sharp has a different dynamic than a or c sharp each of them have different dynamic and if the composer puts piano it doesn't mean that every note on that phrase is the same right. piano right it's direction that things are happening within piano dynamic so first thing i ask is do first line let's say attitude number one by low brow or bass as the melody right do that line but control the intensity of every note so if the difference is the, the uh, is, is big between the notes the, the change of dynamic of intensity will be big if it's just half a tone or one tone the change is less so control that first so the the, the, the simplest way to shape a phrase is when when the melody goes up you play more yeah crescendo and goes down the crescendo. that's the most simple the most natural way of playing so so i ask for that first then the same line we do we think about time so if, if you put notes exactly on time or behind the beat or in front of the beat, w- w- how does it feel with this character of the piece? No, You really have to plan that and make sure that you know exactly where, where you place every note in time. I believe that time in music is, is, is one of the most important things, how you play with time, where you place the note. That makes it. I mean, that makes it. 
And then third thing, as I said, articulation. You're thinking, where, what articulation? Then color. Your color, usually at the beginning, I try to make them do it as natural as possible. So if the melody goes up, if, if it's becoming more intense, then the color opens up to brighter side. Then it goes down to warmer side. Let's start with this very basic thing, but, but to really be aware of the color. And then vibrato. Some notes are dying for vibrato. They're asking, please vibrate. And some not so much. So make sure you, you, you put that in, 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 in the music. And once they are able to do each element separately, on each line, then I ask to do all five elements in the same time in each line. Once this is done, then we do everything. Then we try to connect. And believe me, simple Brower Etude number one becomes t- the hardest piece they've ever played till till that yeah, time. Right. They are miserable. They hate <laughs> me for that. You, you know, because I said, look, this is a and, and why do I choose Leo Brower uh, Etudes? Because they really are easy. And it's very easy to read, so they don't have to spend their energy, their time on reading and fingering pieces and looking where they are. Mm-hmm. They just, it's simple text that they just do it and they can focus on the elements, mm-hmm. on the on the things that we want to focus on. If I gave them a different uh, Lobos attitude, they would first have to struggle with learning it and blah, blah, blah. With Brower, it's just, you, we can go straight to work. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm telling you, the results are really nice. I mean, they, they, they it opens their brain so much. And then later, you benefit from it. So, 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 I always think that we should start with line. I mean, with other instruments, it's a natural thing. Piano has right and left hand two lines, right? The violin has one line. The clarinet has one line. The oboe, and the cello, etc. Uh, the, the, for us it's all like this right. we don't know and very often you ask where's the, the first line they, people don't know they mix the, they sometimes they push so much the, the, the second line that it becomes the melody right. it's also about the finger very often I see that the lower note is fingered on a higher string you know we should be very careful with that right. very careful so and, it sounds natural and also because many of the score we play uh, because the editing process and everything, they mix themselves, the, the, the thing. I mean, when it's the composer, initially, they wrote all the time properly. But sometimes the edition that were published, I mean, for Ponce, for example, it's a mm-hmm. big mess, the line. Mm, yeah. You need to rebuild, if you don't have the original, exactly. everything cleanly, because it's a big mess. Yeah. And actually about this uh, singing line... You agree I, again, right? Ah, yes, I, I, have, I have one of my former students who did his thesis for teaching about... Uh, for the students who are like 12, so kind of young, how they learn polyphonia with tablatura from the viola. And all the pieces for viola, they are linking with uh, singing, you know? Right. They were like seven or five, seven composers and they did just singing adaptation for the, for the, for the guitar. And when he explained, he explained me that it was his project, I was thinking naturally that it was project for students, you know, high levels. Uh, good level student and actually his project was about for the teenagers you know normal teenager not the one who play <laughs> very particularly good and actually it was the project to learn the singing and the polyphony from that because this is the from all the pieces they are the more connected with singing because right. they come from that and actually he did that on his class and it worked really fine <laughs> and it's just about that actually so it's very there is something like this about about it and I read it and it was really very interesting and it's kind of what Lukas say but for younger player because you just teach to students yeah but for younger player and and uh, of course with you know this uh, 200 pages of a thesis but it, it was really great the guy is Gonzalo Cordero I just say his name but uh, <laughs> but he, he really did a great job and that's very interesting and and, and because of course because we have I remember one thing. Uh, Alfred Brendel is one one piano player who just stopped his career like five or six years ago. And he was this kind of very intellectual mid-European mm. player, you know, very, very intellectual. I love him as a player, but he's very intellectual. And they ask him what he has to say about the piano. And you would think something very complex, you know, from him. And he say, the piano can sing. And it, <laughs> it, it looks, you know, more something that maybe Rubinstein would say, you know? I mean, Rubinstein was talking like to this kind of simple phrase. Him is much more like this. And actually, because the, the, the piano, they have also this kind of rhyme because they can't really act on right. the note. I mean, half of the piano player, they vibrate, but for nothing. And, and, and 
And in fact, he was talking about this shape. And it's very surprising from him because he is one of the piano players who never played Chopin, right? My he was playing just, you know, mainly European music, you know, uh, European, uh, you know, the Haydn, Schubert, and not the romantic one. Uh, and, and, and for him, it was the main thing. And, and the singing is very, very important. For that, you need to be super aware about what Lukas said. And I must say that for me, it's kind of new to think like this. Uh, maybe five, six or seven years ago, I wasn't thinking like this. I was very obsessed about the polyphony, but I wasn't thinking so much about the, the about the singing. And I totally changed my mind because my student, I guess, and because myself. And, and so this is one of the things we should learn from the beginning, I think, uh, very early. Uh, the way to do it is probably very complex because uh, I can't say that I did it with my young seven, eight, nine years old, but I'm sure it's possible to do that with them. We don't have so much practice because you didn't have young kids. And me, when I had young kids, I wasn't thinking so much about right. that. Do you? Uh, I, I liked something you said in an interview. I don't. I don't remember who it was with, but I saw an interview that you did where you talked about playing easy pieces. Oh yes. And I know that I kind of wish that more high-level players would do this because there are some pieces out there that everyone plays mm -hmm. but you rarely hear them played really mm -hmm. really really well yes. I mean I saw at one of the GFAs a few years back and I wish I could remember who it was I was so surprised by it I think that I just forgot who was playing mm -hmm. that I heard someone play Julio Florida mm -hmm. and I heard it a hundred times and play, play myself and, and mm -hmm. it brought me to tears mm -hmm. and I, I, <laughs> I don't even know how but it was so yes ma ma marvelous and if you could just talk briefly about that that playing easy music maybe it makes yeah, it easier yeah. to think about lines you need to be brave to play easy music in fact uh, you know when you see up here I've seen Sokolov not a long time ago and he opened the concert with the the Mozart do mi sa si do do da you know the very easy sonata mm -hmm. so he did that I mean there were like 2,000 people maybe they were like I don't know 1,000 who could play it with no technical or musical problem in that you know and so you need to be very brave to have enough confidence to play pieces that most of the people could play so on the guitar is not as bad as that because actually there's no really something so easy compared and and there are less people who can play so but still when you play something difficult i mean you are protected because you know that at least you won't have half of the whole who is able to do it <laughs> i mean that that's there's something like this there is also the competition system that probably don't horrors you. I mean, I heard, for example, one time some guy was playing uh, the Sonata 3 by Ponce, and one of the judges said that it was too easy for a final. I mean, and the guy was <laughs> a real player. I mean, first, it's not easy at all. Uh, it's technically, very and musical, very it's not very easy. The most and, complex yes, I mean, Sonata. and you have a lot of things you have yeah. to fix because probably the writing also is problematic. I mean, and of course, when you raise with this kind of things, imagine this guy, he played that and he has one judge who say, oh, you know, it's too easy for final. Uh, after that, you are just totally paralyzed right. to, to play something a little bit easier. You are just paralyzed because you heard that. So uh, that's the thing. There's many things that makes you playing, you know, some stuff more difficult. And also there is also the guitar by itself is, uh, you know, uh, on the piano, uh, for example, you have Mozart, you have Haydn, uh, you have many co Schubert, uh, which are not so difficult technically, technically, not so difficult technically, and people are used to play that. But still, in final of competition, you have Tchaikovsky, Rachmaninov, right, blah, blah, blah. Nobody would play even the Beethoven or even the least. So it means that even for themselves, I mean, when you see the final of competition, they all the time when they have the, cho the choice between four or five, Concerto, they would choose the rack or the Tchaikovsky, mm -hmm. the rack three. Uh, so it's not just a, a, git, a guitar problem, but on the guitar, I must say that all the larger pieces, they are somehow a bit difficult. But for example, the piece I played yesterday, the, the, the Sweet Popular Brazilian, is quite easy. But the problem is me, I heard those pieces played by teenagers all the time, very badly. Right. And if you just think objectively, 
you have Villa Lobos, he's one of the few major composers who wrote many things for the guitar with Takemitsu and some other. But Tedesco are not major composer if you compare with Villa Lobos. He's a good composer, but you know. Ponce is a very good composer, I like him, but he doesn't have the same importance mm. than Villa Lobos. So we have Villa Lobos who really composed for the guitar. He did like two hours of music, a concerto, and blah, blah, blah. And a big part, Villa Lobos study won't be played because it's too difficult to play the 12, basically. And the other pieces, they are too easy. I mean, if you want to play the 12 studies, good. It's incredibly difficult. Yeah. And I must say that I didn't so much heard that. But the two, the, the five prelude and the five uh, sweet popular Brazilian, too easy. So, so it's kind of weird because probably Villa Lobos is the most important composer of the 20 who wrote more than just one piece, you know, like Britain, Walton, blah, blah, And he's quite never played except three studies in competition very fast. That's the thing. So it's quite interesting to hear some player, professional player, who decide to play that. Because they are great composer. He is a great composer. So that, 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 but you need to be brave. I mean, not now in my age, no. Because I do concerts, you, I don't need to be brave. But, but when I was younger, yes, you need to be very brave and maybe kamikaze for competition. Because <laughs> I am afraid that if you play these kind of things for competition, you would be crushed. I am very afraid of that. Also, I, I, I want to say that I, I think that besides obvious obvious pieces, uh, that actually nothing is really easy yeah. when you want to play well. I mean, every single piece, as I told you, Etude number no. one by by Brouwer becomes one of the most difficult pieces that the students have ever played, even though most of them played already the Arab words and and invocation and dance and stuff like that. <laughs> they, they just get miserable with this little etude. So if you want to be really good, and if you want to perform something absolutely beautifully, every single thing is very difficult. I believe music is difficult. It's not an easy. Thing. It's not an easy job. It is very complex. It's on so many levels. If you just want to just play it and, and with with the, the overall musicality, yeah, it'll be easy. But if you really want to get inside it and try to find every single thing, the line, control every note, control time of every note, it becomes a difficult thing. So I don't believe that uh, you said the Barcarola by... Uh, no, you said the Julia, yeah, Flor yeah, yeah, yeah. Julia Florida. Uh, yeah, mm, mm, I don't. I think it's. I th actually think it's a pretty difficult piece to play beautifully. Yeah. It is the line there. It's it's the 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 accompaniment, the lightness of it, the timing of it, the singing of the line, the legato, the long phrase, the the, the bow instrument phrase that you want to get out of it, it to, you know, to make sure that it doesn't fall down, that it just keeps moving with the with the slower tempo. There's so many things you have to control. And if someone did it and brought you to tears, it means that he really did an amazing job with it. And that's not easy. No. That's not easy. Yeah. Just because a kid can play a piece doesn't mean it's easy. Right. You know? And, and, and um, so, so yeah, I, I think some, uh, some etudes by, by uh, Villa Lobos, no, maybe Villa Lobos is not a good example, but, but some pieces very virtuosic, oh, like Carnival of, the, of Venice mm -hmm. or, or like uh, Koyun Baba or something. I think that's much easier than, yeah, for sure. than, uh, than the Barcarola. Mm. Much easier. Me, much I would easier. be ter terrified to start a concert with the Barcarola, for example. Yeah. I would be much more to control if I, everything. If I, mean, I start with the Carnaval de Venice and I know very well the piece, the beginning is pain, pain. Yeah. I mean, even if you are not co uh, warm, this is very easy to do. Just the first three lines, you know, dying, dying, dying. It's very easy. But if you start bah, 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 and you are not warm, I mean, uh, what yeah. not? I mean, it's ten times more difficult. Yes, it is for me. I it mean, is. So it depends. I know I was I was in a, in a um, festival somewhere two years ago. Uh, I remember where it was, but I don't want to say. Uh, and and uh, I, I was not in the jury because I, I don't, I, I never do that. But 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 I listened to a little bit of the final because there was something after the final, a concert or something. So I listened a little bit to it, and there was a guy playing this piece, uh, the Koyumbaba piece. Uh, and I have nothing against it. I mean. It's it's interesting and uh, and it's it's fun. People love it and many great guitars play it. I understand, no problem. Uh, 
but some uh, some it's it looks like it's very difficult right. lots of things going on it's fast the passages and stuff and someone played that uh, at the uh, at the at the competition and after that he played andante largo by sor and on andante largo you could see how many problems he has mm. On Coyung Baba, he just played it and it was like, wow, amazing virtuosity and stuff. And then the simple line by Sor. Mm. The, 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 you know, the very simple structure. And then, I mean, you could you could see that he has so many problems there. Mm. No? And you would think that Andante Largo, you can side read it, basically. There's none. And Coyung Baba, you, you, you need to spend you know, weeks to read it yeah, with all the score Daturas and everything <laughs> and the arpeggios and stuff. You would think you would think that this is but then once both are ready you see what is really more difficult. So I think I think if you wanna be a good musician and want to play a really high quality music with high quality musicianship, every single thing is difficult. Every single thing. I, I heard Mari Pariah doing fit for Elise, you know, and doing it so amazingly beautifully that I can imagine that 95% of pianists in the world could not get to that level. Exactly. Even though it's the easiest. The kids in... I played it. Yeah. No, I, when I, I was a little I kid in primary school, I had piano as an additional thing. I played for these. I mean, you can play. But, but to play it like him, extremely difficult. So with difficulty, I will be careful here with this word. Yeah, what is cool. difficult, what is not. Music in general is very difficult. That's it. It is, no matter what you play. If you play well, it means you're good. Because it is difficult. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe just one more question. Since I think very revealing, very important question. Um, what's your favorite dessert? Mm. <laughs> yeah, my favorite dessert. <sighs> I have a sweet tooth, unfortunately, as you can no. tell. Uh, no, you would never tell, right? <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know. Crème brûlée, hmm? maybe? It's an amazing... No, yeah. French are the best with desserts, man. Ba- so. Ballade number one. Unbelievable. In Encore, to finish the concert by Chopin. <laughs> the Chopin Ballade number one. To finish a concert, I think it's the best dessert. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I was gonna say something like Ravel or Debussy. It's a preludes by Debussy are, would be a nice dessert too. But, but I would stay with creme brulee. Actually. Ah, okay. To eat, yes. Yeah. Now me, I have no idea about dessert. Oh come on! You just ordered a brownie the other night. Yeah. <laughs> you love it. it wasn't my favorite dessert. Actually. It was not that. <laughs> so I know what is not. The brownie I took yesterday is not my favorite dessert. Um, mm. No, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe tarte au citron. Oh, that's pretty good. But the, the 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 French one, not the American apple uh, <laughs> lemon pie. That it's creamy lemon. No, I it's very difficult to make that tarte citron. Yeah. To make sure that you can you can taste the egg. Yeah. It's really the process with the temperatures. I tried to make it. One lady in the, in the Bergerac taught okay. me how to make it, and and we tried to do it at home, and it wasn't very very easy to to, to do. But it's like a barbarella. Yeah, it's just like you see, it's simple tart, you know, crust, cream, that's it. But to make it, and it's the same thing, exactly. Look, nowadays, the chefs, the best chefs in the world, they cook in the most simple food ever. Mm. The, the ingredient, the quality of it, it speaks for itself, right? So if you see a, an amazing Michelin star menu, you will see a dish that is composed of three ingredients, you know? Uh, and if you go to Friday's or something, you see a dish composed of 50 ingredients, <laughs> right? And, and, and with the, the, the three Michelins are like the best chefs from, from France. Like, uh, Joël Robuchon or, or uh, Daniel Bouloud or all these guys. You see, you see their dishes, they're very simple. Three ingredients, beautifully cooked, perfectly executed. That's what music is about too. Less is more. You learn that with age, you know? So, yes, me, I was agree about what you say with the music. And, 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 for, and for the food, I am not agree, I trust him. <laughs> because I don't know anything about food, but I trust him. For the music, I agreed. <laughs> By the way, if you want to be on a jury, you have to win something. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, I've never won a competition, so they never invited me. 
Well, I think that's, that's about it for me. I thank you guys so much thank for talking you. with us. Thanks thank for being you. here. And I, I gotta say, I think I speak for both of us that what you guys are doing here is quite spectacular. Yeah, I mean, really, uh, it's it's a group of of people that love it. They do it voluntarily, yeah. and 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 it's so well organized. I mean, there's yeah, yeah. every single thing is organized. You you have every single thing from the the, the time you arrive at the airport till the end is perfect. Mm. I mean, there's nothing to 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 complain about. I mean, it's, it's, may, it's just may, perfection. Maybe uh, the live Complain. music could be <laughs> a little bit less loud. I mean, you need to fix that. Oh, come on. You will enjoy the band. <laughs> we'll have to talk to Miami. We'll, we'll yeah. get them to turn the door. The Miami yeah. County Maya or something like this to make the music a little bit lower. Than, uh, <laughs> no, but it was perfect. No, no, it's amazing. It's Thank amazing you what you do. It's one of the most spectacular uh, uh, organizations I've seen in the US, for sure. Wow. For Thank sure. You. Really. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having us. Thank you. Great. Bye. <laughs>